one of the questions that many people with Parkinson, their partners or caregiver, but also doctors ask me a lot. They ask me, how does the, the disease affect, affect sexuality? What is the relationship? What's the, what is the connection between these two issues? And I can tell you as a sex therapist that actually the relationship is very interesting and it is multi-level relationship and also a dynamic relationship. What do I mean? I mean first that you can, uh, um, you can uh, sense or experience sexual problems in all stages of the disease. Even when the symptoms only begin, during the progressive uh, uh, stages of the disease, and also even if you have some problem, one problem, it doesn't always stay with you. Sometimes it disappears and sometimes something new comes. It's not a very good and a, a news for, for those who have Parkinson or have to live with Parkinson, but it is important to know. So what are the association? How does the PD, the Parkinson disease, and how does the treatment of the disease affect? So let's first um, I think about one of the common problems. And you know that one of the common problems of the Parkinson disease is depression or depressive mood or anxiety. Now, depression has effect on our sexuality because when people are depressed, usually they will not have the mood for sex, meaning that we will notice some decrease in desire even a lack of desire, which can happen to you as a person with Parkinson, but also to your partner, to your intimate partner, because you know our intimate partner are affected by our moods. Then it will be difficult for us when we are depressed to get aroused, meaning that if you are a man, you will have difficulties with your erections. And if you are a woman, you will have difficulties in your arousal, in lubrication. You might even have sometimes painful intercourse. And of course, if we have problems in arousing ourselves, we will have problems in having orgasm. So as you can say, see, only depression or depressive mood can affect all the stages of our sexual response. Now let's say that as a person with Parkinson, you get treatment for the depression. And usually you will get SSRIs, which are a kind of antidepressant. But antidepressant make you more relaxed and then you have a better mood. But they have another effect. They slow your body. And that means that when you will have sex, it will take you longer to get aroused and sometimes longer to reach your orgasm. In some cases, even you cannot reach orgasm at all. And you will see that you try and try and try and nothing ends. And this is very devastating. Let's say that you are a man and you are trying to have intercourse and it doesn't end. So then you will lose your erection in the end. And if you are the woman, the partner of this man, then after 10 minutes or after 5 minutes of effort, you will be very disappointed. And then later both of you lose the energy or the, the will to have sex again. So you have to know that when you use antidepressants and if you have a problem with your reaching orgasm, then know that this is part of the problem and maybe you have to plan your sexual activity differently. For example, stop it in the middle and don't wait for an orgasm. It's okay. It's not always we have to wait for the last stage. Now, let's think of another thing. You know that Parkinson's disease is a disease that one of its manifestations is motor, meaning problems with movements. So what does it have to do with sexuality? First, all the, the question of fine finger touching. Now remember, sexuality has to do a lot with touching. We are caressing one another. We are holding one another. For many women, the touching of their partner is very important. It helps them get concentrated, get aroused, feel ex experiencing or feeling of desire. 
that means that if you lose this fine finger touching, then you will have a problem with the arousal. Now we have problems with moving. You know that in sex we move sometimes. It's not like a gym, a, a gym training, but we move a little. For example, let's say that you are caressing one another and then you want to continue your intercourse and you want to change a position. The men can be over the women, over the woman in the men, uh, the men uh, above position, or the the woman can be over the men. And if you have Parkinson, the movement, the the demand to concentrate on moving, is so demanding from you that sometimes you lose all the arousal that you have already gained, and you will find that you have to plan the position of your body not in order not to lose it. Then we have other problems. For example, you know that uh, there are non-motor problems of the Parkinson disease. For example, the speech is very, very low. And you know that sometimes the face is a mask and we don't see expression, vivid expressions. And you know that couple communication has to do with speech. Telling my spouse that I love you should be said in a loud voice. And if it is in a very apathic tone like I love you, she doesn't believe you or he doesn't believe you. Whatever is the person whoever is the person with the Parkinson. So we have a problem of speech and then we have a problem of changes in the face expression that do not reveal what we really feel. So we have to find ways to say it better in a better way. And then we have the treatment, the various dopaminergic treatment of the Parkinson, which might cause some of you have problems with erection, Sometimes men even have problems with ejaculation, like premature ejaculation that you never experienced before, and suddenly you have it, and you have to cope with it. And maybe you will have different kind of changes that you never thought of. So what I'm saying is, if you sense any problems, new problems that you didn't sense before in your sexual response, in your sexual activity, in your sexual relationship, ask your physician. Maybe it has to do to your Parkinson. Maybe it has to do to the treatment. And maybe your doctor can change the medication or the treatment or add something uh, like another medication which can cure your problem. So don't stay with the disease. Don't stay with its effects. Do something about it and good luck.